I'm Dave Marzano. I'm from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Uh, I currently work as the program director and as well as the director of our simulations uh, projects. The most recent project that we've been working on is a um, emergency course in, in obstetrics, uh, which the abbreviation is ECO. Um, it is a course that was designed by ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. The University of Michigan has been part of the ACOG Simulations Consortium since its inception, um, and one of the projects that they've worked on is developing this uh, course in a similar fashion to CPR uh, courses, um, but designed for obstetrical emergencies. It makes heavy use of simulation, so we use full body simulators. Um, we do this in partnership with the Simulation Center. We put our unique Michigan spin on that by incorporating our unit nurses as well as our medical students. The ACOG course is a standalone course that can be run. Uh, for instance, if you come to a meeting, um, you can go through the course. We thought what would make that unique is for our faculty that work with our residents and the nurses on our unit with our medical students uh, to practice these obstetrical emergencies as a team. Uh, interprofessional education as well as interprofessional teamwork is kind of the key to providing excellent patient care. Through a CME, so they were looking for innovative grants for continuing medical education, and uh, we applied for a grant for that uh, to initially get this off the ground. And um, really, that there isn't a, still a challenge of monetary sustainment because that kind of got the project going and that allowed for the purchase of the course materials, uh, which are reusable. The four stations that we do is we do a postpartum hemorrhage uh, station, which is uh, postpartum hemorrhage is, is one of the leading causes of maternal mortality, both in the United States and worldwide. And it's something that, that we do see a lot of. It is a teamwork collaborative and therefore rehearsing uh, those situations and working on communication skills uh, is, is imperative. Uh, and so practicing that over and, the o over and over helps us to be very good at what we do. Um, likewise, one of the other stations we practice is a shoulder dystocia, which is where the, sometimes the baby's shoulder gets stuck between the pubic bone. And that's, that's an emergency and how to resolve that. And again, teamwork and communications are the key when you look at quality improvement and you look at um, root cause analyses, the number one problem that, that is identified in almost all these situations is communication. And so that is, there's a heavy focus on doing teamwork and team communications. The other two stations that we do, um, one is for an operative vaginal delivery. Again, these are a little bit less common, and so it's an opportunity to, to recharge your skills. Um, and the last one is, is working through a vaginal breach delivery, which is almost exclusively not done in the United States anymore, um, but is an emergency where a patient could show up. Um, there's five um, didactic sessions. One accompanies each of the emergency situations that I described earlier. The fifth one is all about communication. And so that is the key thing. And it talks about safety checks, such as, you know, check backs and two challenge rules. Um, so, and those are, and SBAR, and those are things that are very commonly taught in nursing school to nursing students. Um, they're becoming more commonly taught in medical school to medical students, and it was an opportunity to kind of bring those those two groups together and practice those skills. And the medical students got to actually go through and be the evaluators. So um, they were trained in a training session ahead of time on checklists. And so they were the ones that were standing there to make sure that all the, the correct actions were done. And so they were actively involved. And some of them played the part of patients or patients' partners as well. It came up um, as the fact that you know we do a lot of simulations with the medical students. Um, part of the CME grant was to involve medical students. Um, the OBGYN interest group here at the University of Michigan was very interested in getting something where the students could participate in some of the educational activities that we did. Actually, the number one thing that people say they've taken away is, again, the, the feeling of goodness of working with colleagues. And so it's an opportunity to at least practice the skills, even if you may never in your whole practice of medicine come across that clinical opportunity. In the event that you need to, though, it's critical that you know what you're doing. And as time goes by, there's very few experts left because this, again, is not a commonly practiced uh, procedure. So the idea is that um, we were in the process 
uh, we had moved into the new uh, Von Voigtlander Women's Hospital. Um, with that, we had a rapid expansion in the number of patients that we were seeing and a rapid expansion in the, in the nursing staff. While, while our re number of residents and faculty were in relatively constant over that time, um, and the push for developing teamwork and team communications on the unit was growing stronger. And so um, as participants also with the ACOG group, we thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of you know, kind of marry those two things together. So an opportunity to practice with communication, but also kind of hone skills. It's also been a great opportunity f to get to know each other. So then again, um, with so many different people, it's quite possible you could work six months and not work with the same same nurse twice. And so this is an opportunity for people to get to know their people's names and just, you know, work together as friends. People who are friends work better, uh, communicate better. Uh, the feedback that we received from all people involved, but particularly the nursing staff, was phenomenal. Uh, as part of that, we did do, do follow-up, so there was an initial survey following completion of the course immediately, and then we surveyed those same participants six months later uh, to ask them whether or not they felt like anything that they had learned in the course was useful um, and whether or not that made a difference, and, and, and those results were favorable. Um, some of those things are harder with, to assess because some of the stations are very rare obstetrical outcomes, so you in six months may not actually have had that clinical um, situation arise, uh, which is part of the purpose of the course, is to teach both rare things, uh, but also common things that have big impacts on maternal outcomes. It wasn't a primary objective of the course. The primary objective is to practice these skills as they go back. And again, when we did our six-month follow-up, people noted that they felt that this made them more comfortable managing some of the emergencies that arose during that time. Uh, but I'd say the number one thing was the teamwork aspect of that. We also were able to learn a lot about our unit. So there was a lot of feedback at the end about our own particular policies here. And I think that's what made this particularly unique separate from from the way the, if you had gone to a meeting and done this course just on your own is that we were able to go back and kind of look at some of the policies and and procedures that are that are our own institutional policies and say are these really working um, and that's really how you it's you, that's really a great use of simulation and and these types of drills is to say how do these work in practice um, quite frequently, a lot of policies and procedures are drawn up in a room, not necessarily by the people who are on the ground using them, and don't necessarily get to see the implementation of those. And so that type of feedback is really invaluable. You know, one of the big things is we always put our patients first at the University of Michigan. And so ultimately, um, by practicing these skills, one, both from a skill standpoint, that Im improves our uh, the delivery of care that we provide, but also practicing the communications helps to reduce errors and the, and the potential risk uh, to patients. And then third is, if I was a patient, I'd want to be taking care of a group of people who like to work together because it just makes the environment a more comfortable uh, environment. So the simulation center was really critical in being able to um, complete this project. We used over the course of the, each course we used three full body simulators, um, two of which are from the simulation center. One is which our department utilizes to do on-unit drills and on-unit uh, simulations. And then we made use actually of some of the family medicine pelvises that they uh, store in the simulation center. The unique thing about our simulation center is one of the factors they took into account when they were building it is they made the the um, the rooms in the simulation center look like the rooms in the hospital. And the particularly the labor and delivery room is laid out almost exactly the same way our on-unit um, our on-unit uh, rooms actually are. And that's a big change from the early days of simulation where you would just walk into a room and there'd be kind of a background hanging from the wall to, and you had to kind of pretend that that was something. This is an opportunity where you actually have to take the baby from the mom over the pediatricians um, and, and you can even have to move the bed out of the room like we would have to do in a true emergency. And so that added value. Um, allowed us to practice that without having to disrupt the care on the unit. In years past, we've done some of these drills on the floor um, so that we could have that realism, but 
life goes on the floor. So the clinical operations are still going on, and we want to be careful not to take away a bed that would be potentially used for a patient. We are fortunate enough to have high-tech models that bleed and respond to, to the normal maneuvers and things that we would do. Um, what's fabulous is that in the Sim Center they have recordings so that um, the people who are running the simulation do not need to be part of the simulation. They can be behind a double mirror. Um, they can be making notes and the whole time it's recording. And I guess one of the other key things I hadn't mentioned yet is that we did team debriefs with those videos where you go through and you um, watch the video again with the team. And it's always amazing to find out what people's recall is very different from what happened. And they'll be like, oh no, I asked for that medication. It's like, actually this was the medication you asked for. And it's, it's powerful to see yourself do that. And, and it demonstrates very clearly some of the communication techniques and why it's important to do you know, a check back when you're giving a medication for either the name of the medication, the dose, or the route. Um, and so again, those were very powerful in, in doing that. And that's a key part of simulation. And quite frequently they start by ordering the most expensive models on the block. And it's not the models that are important, it's the curriculum that you use to teach. And then you want to find a model that is going to fulfill the requirements of the curriculum and your goals and objectives that you're trying to do. There's, there's many now published projects out there. Um, the ACOG website, so for people who are doing obstetrics and gynecology, actually has all of this available on their website.